Hey everyone, it's Brandy, and you are watching Abstract Crafter, and welcome to Brandy's Craft Corner. I want to say Super Craft Sunday, it's, but that didn't happen. I have to apologize. I did film this video, in fact. It ended up being three hours long because I didn't know what I was doing, so I just started over. So what today's video is going to be, as you could tell by the title is a tutorial on the one two three punch board and what this is is this makes envelopes bows and gift boxes of various sizes uh, you can see here if you go down this chart each one of those is a different size and I will walk you through how to do all of them for the bows we can make six different sizes and we can get quite a few for the gift boxes as well. Uh, this particular machine came with a project book. It has six different projects in it and we are going to make all six. Uh, so it has envelope, the bow, a box, an envelope liner, a string tie box, which is really good for like little table favors, party favors, or wedding favors. Then it has a coin envelope and a file folder card, and all of those projects are right here on the front. So there's the envelope and the envelope liner, there's the bow, more envelopes, uh, there's a gift box there, there's the string tie one, there's the money envelope, and there's the cute itty bitty tiny file folder. I love that. So, I'm going to explain this machine to you a little bit, and then we'll talk about the materials that you need and then we'll talk about the paper pads that I decided to use in case you have them or want them. I got everything from Michaels. This costs $34.99. I used a 50% off coupon essentially paying like $17.50 I think it came to. And I just saw this in fact on Amazon the exact same thing for $13.49 from I think it was American Crafts so I will link all of them down below um, Michael's website the We Are Memory Keepers because this is from We Are Memory Keepers they make a ton of punch boards so all your paper crafting needs are covered by We Are Memory Keepers I don't even want to go into the wide range of just punch boards that they have and so again it makes Envelopes, bows, and boxes. You can buy the envelope punch board and the box punch board separate. I don't know about the bow, though. So, <laughs> I rhymed. Um, and before we take off into this, I wanted to say a big thank you to Don Lee. Uh, her comment, which will be right here. She, I went back to my introduction video for my craft series, and she picked out she suggested Brandy's Craft Corner. And so I just loved it and I want to give all the credit to her. So thank you so much, Don. It I love the name. So I decided to go with Brandy's Craft Corner since I'm most likely going to be uploading on Sundays. It'll be, the titles will always be Brandy's Craft Corner, 123 Punch Board, Tutorial, Super Craft Sundays. Something like that. I uh, will probably have a few more craft videos going up in between. Uh, I want to try to do at least two to three diamond painting videos and then two craft videos a week because I have um, a mini series coming up that I'll, I'll talk about when that video comes out with the unboxing of the mini mini dollhouse. It's called, actually called a box theater. Okay, so let's focus on what you're here to see. So what this thing does and it'll make a lot more sense once I'm actually demonstrating it. But you'll have like a, a guide here that you'll use to line your paper up. Uh, this is for the boxes and I think the bows, no, the bow guideline is right here. These are the, the lines that you use to essentially mark, mark it, score it, so that it's easier to fold. And this one did come with its own bone folder, and it just slides, oopsie, it slides in right here. So it's all nice and compact. This actually 
extends out and it folds in and it goes like that. This does have an additional insert that has um, where it leaves off here at the 7x7, seven seven, it continues on and gets bigger. So it's just an additional sticker. I have no idea where I'm going to put it right now because I don't have like a craft table per se. So why don't we get started because if you're anything like me, I learn better by seeing and doing. Reading isn't so uh, the easiest way for me. Uh, hopefully we'll have time to get through all of these. I cut all the paper in advance so that we could um, save some time. And real quick, I just want to show you the paper pads that we're using. And I'll show you examples of the ones that I made for the previous video. <laughs> so I found this Feeling Naughty one by Craftsmith. And it's a hot buy. I paid $4.50 with a 25% off everything purchased. It was originally 6 and I guess originally, even before that, it was $12. So we got this one. Let's let's move our punch board over. So we'll be using this paper. I have another Craftsmith Hot Buy called Ooh La La. If I didn't say it, the name is Feeling Naughty. Nautical. This one is gorgeous. It's got all kinds of like super girly, like really cute designs and cutouts in it. And this one was also... $4.50. And I didn't do, I'll do a really fast flip through on this one too. So this one's got oh, a lot of like nautical, it's got a lot of gold leafed paper. And apparently my fingers don't want to flip through this one. And so yeah, it's got a lot of very nautical stuff. And then I bought this big recollections one. I do believe, yeah, Recollections. And this one is a lot thinner, but it has a lot more options, too, that I thought were perfect for making cards and boxes and whatnot. So as you can see, just by my fast flip through, the cute little designs that you can get in this one. This one was $20, $19.99. I used a 50% off coupon and got it for $9.99. So I got all three of these for $20.83 after tax and coupons. So basically I got them all for the price of this one. Even a little less. So why don't we start with just making a regular envelope? Because that is actually the, initially what I was after when looking for this, but Michaels didn't carry just the envelope punch. So um, I have a few examples here. I have three examples. I have three different sizes. I mean, it, you really, any size you want, you can get. I made this little tiny one I thought would be cute. And I just did simple cards. They're just one page cards with a simple embellishment. And I could even take it a step further and add something else if I wanted to. And then this one is my favorite. I love this one. And I didn't put any glue here yet because I need to. I need to find just that right product that I want. And then for this card, I think this was an A2 or something, so I wasn't sure exactly what that meant. So if somebody can please kindly explain to me what A2, A4, and all of that means. It's all in here, but it doesn't tell me measurements. So right here, it'll say the size. I mean, I can guess what the size is based on where it falls. Because as you can see, it'll go from three and a half by four to three and a half by four and a half, and then it just says four bar. I'm guessing that's four by four, four, and a, yeah. And then a Gladstone. I have no idea what that is either. But then over here, it has the A2, the A6, over here, A7, A8. I tried looking it up, but the measurements they gave me indicated to me um, like twice this size as if it would be a fold over card. So I don't know if that's what that is, but so I made this one and it's just plain on the back. And this, so these were made with a different paper pad. It's, I had to, I don't have it readily accessible. So we won't be able to look at that. And this was the first one I made. And this paper, if you can tell right there, rips super easy. So I wasn't happy with that, and I had heard that the Craftsmith doesn't rip. 
And so that's what I made with this one because I love this style, like these old letters and like antique feels that I just love that. And of course this one, if you don't know, my husband is an accountant and when this paper is this way, it's an, it's, it ends up being an accounting sheet and I think it's actually upside down. But So it's actually an, one of those accounting sheets. So that's what we're going to start out making. And then we're going to go move into... Let's set those there. We're going to move into... It's, we're just going to make another envelope very quickly. But it has a liner on it, which I think just cleans it right up. And this is the card that I made for this one. I just... This paper pad had really nice cutouts. And this was one of the cutouts. And so I thought it just tied it all together very nicely. And then on the other side, it's just plain. So... And then, if you can see down in there, you can see the liner, so it goes down and it covers really beautifully. So we'll, I'll show you how to make a liner. And to save time, I did pre-cut all the paper. So then we're going to also make... I just want to show you what <clears throat> an example of one of the bows looks like. And it's, it's so cute. It's very simple. And you could use it on the gift box or, or not. I, and it, you can see inside there that it's completely covered, so you wouldn't be able to sneak peeks inside the box or anything. So yeah, this is, we'll be making one of these, and as you can see, I had to tape mine because I just couldn't get it to hook. I'm hoping we have better luck today. And so I decided that the bow looked really cute on there, and my tape is not sticking. Perfect. You really want to learn from me? <laughs> so why don't we put this stuff away and get busy. None of this stuff actually takes that long. I think it takes longer to cut all the paper than it does to actually make everything. So some materials that you will need is you might want to have a paper cutter of some sort. I have this one and then I have a little mini one that's not as nice as this. Let's see if I have it handy. So I just got this one at Hobby Lobby for like a dollar. And it's just simple. There's no markings or anything on it. You have to push down to make it cut. And we'll get a nice close-up. So, I mean, you really got to line up your cut with that line. Whereas inside here, if you don't have one of these or you've never seen one, it's got, let's see. It's got a little wire in there that you would use as your guideline. Plus it's got the measurements and this will pull out. It goes up to 12 inches, which is the size of scrapbook paper. So that's a useful tool to have. You can always just do scissors. I mean, it might take a little longer. You might not have as e even enough cuts, but you could also use a ruler and an X-Acto knife. Um, I prefer my own bone folder. It just goes a little bit smoother. And you want some double-sided sticky tape. I uh, do not recommend this one. This one is horrible to use. I don't like it. This one I am almost out of, so I'm hoping it's an, if we have enough just to finish the project. I love this one. It goes down nice and smooth. It leaves a decent sized line. I mean, any kind of sticky double-sided sticky tape will work for a lot of these projects. Okay, so like I said, we're going to start out with an envelope. And I'll show you the card that I made for this and I do need to do a little trimming on this and it looks crooked on the bottom because my cutter I think I need to change the blade so I thought this was really cute as a card every sailor needs a magical mermaid how true is that and then on the back side I just made a little spot where you could write a note and then I just trimmed it I mean I suppose I could have went this way too but I liked it better at the top I did play around with spacing so this is the card that needs an envelope and like I said for the sake of time I pre-cut everything and we're gonna use my other bone folder just because I, I prefer that one and I'll walk you through this completely I just want to go grab my book here so I wrote down all the measurements this card like it came with it like I, this was a cutout from the paper pad and I wanted to use the matching paper I mean, how often do you really get a chance to do that? So, I thought this was a good opportunity for that. 
um, this card was actually 7 by 4 and 7 eighths, and there wasn't really a guide for that, so I thought, well, I haven't made an envelope this big, so I made this 5 by 7 and so what you're going to do, I'll put the card out to the side, you're going to come over here, and your card size, you're going to find it here, let's move to the middle, you're going to find it here, and so 5 by 7 is all the way in this far column, and it's the second one down. So it tells you what size you need to cut your paper to for the envelope, depending on the card that you want. And this paper was already pre-cut down to 9 and 7 eighths. In this punch guide, 4 and 1 eighth, it is actually right here. So you can see it's got all the cut-up measurements. And so you're going to take your paper, and you're going to put it in here. And now you'll have to forgive me because I'm looking through a monitor here. And you're going to slide this over until it lines up with that 4 and 1 eighth that your guide over here told you to line it up at. So wherever it says punch guide, that's where you're going to line your paper up. And that's only going to, you're only going to use this for the first punch. So let's get that relined up. So 4 and an eighth. And hopefully I'm lined up nice and good. And so what you're going to do then is... We need this guy. I like my bone folder, but this one fits perfectly inside the grooves. Alright, make sure I'm lined up. I'm a perfectionist, so I like to really make sure you're going to push down on this and punch it. And what that's going to do is it's going to cut out a notch, and you'll see. And so then you need to score. And one thing I didn't show you is right under here, it tells you... This first one here says envelope score line A, envelope score line B, and we want envelope score line A, and we're actually going to hold this steady, and I should have opened up this extension, because we only need it for the smallest bit. And you want to make sure that that pops out nice, and it lines up good, so it does. And so, what you're going to do now is that this groove lines up perfectly right here with this first notch and I'll show you that after we're done punching and then there's these notches too this notch would line up to the second score line this notch I think it's just in between I don't think you actually use that for anything and so what you're gonna do is you're gonna actually stick your knife into that notch because that'll score all the way up to the top of the where the paper was cut out and you're just gonna very gently follow that groove line. You don't want to press too hard because you can easily tear your paper, especially where the, these lines that come down meet, and these lines are for the gift box. Okay, so I'm just going to go over that one more time just to be sure I'm not pushing too hard. And then I'm going to take it out because now we're good and I want to show you. So see, it cut that notch out and it scored the paper, if you can see that. And now what you're going to do is you're going to turn it like this. And this score line you just made, you see this notch here, it says envelope, score, groove. You're going to line this score line up with that first notch right there. And then you're, and so this measurement only pertains to the first time you're lining it up. After everything else, you're going to use this score line right there, and you're going to line that up as best you can. And you're going to punch. And then you're going to go right back into that and go all the way up, giving it very light pressure. You don't need much to be able to score that, as you can see. Um, this is what I'm talking about right here, where it meets. Sometimes, if you're going too hard or too fast, your bone holder that comes with it can slip and start going down there or rip the paper. And you, you can see it a little bit right there where... I pushed a little hard on that, so so now you're just going to rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, and you're going to line that notch up to that s score line, you're going to punch, you're going to, oops, and I'm shaking you, so sorry, let me steady you out, and then you're going to follow that line all the way down, you're going to line that up, punch, and score. Alright, so now you should have a piece of paper that looks like this. 
And if it really bothers you that this is not straight, then you, I, it doesn't bother me. I will just make sure that my envelope is up like this. That's all. So now I'm going to fold this in and I'll close this just so we have a nice smooth surface. And so now what you want to do, and see there's your scraps from the paper cutouts. So right up here, you have a corner, let's, I'm trying to get, there we go, corner rounder. And then on this side is a corner splitter. And this is what you use for the gift boxes. So these two bigger flaps are your top and bottom. The smaller ones are your sides. If this was a square envelope, it wouldn't matter. You would just go whichever way you, you preferred. So you're going to stick that in there and you're going to punch. And see, it gave a nice rounded corner. And then you're just going to go ahead and do that. And that's only if you want that rounded corner. I am actually not going to punch this one. Well, yes, I am, because I did it upside down. But typically, I fold that corner in. Okay, so now we don't need this punch board for a sec. So let's move that there. And there's my scraps from rounding my corners. So now what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and turn that. You're going to fold your paper. And if you don't have your own bone holder, then you can use the one that came with it. And you're just going to smooth that down. And as you can see, no ripping. It's really good paper for this, the, the Craftsmith. And so you just want to make those nice and sharp. And then I like to fold this one up first before I add any glue down there because you don't want to accidentally, and we want to make sure we got this the right way. So yep, my scales are going down the way I wanted them. If you prefer to have them going up, that's definitely a choice, your choice, a choice. So let me, okay, so I got mine the way I want it. And so I'm going to make sure those are nice and crisp. So you're going to add your glue here versus here, and you'll see why when I fold it up. So if you were to put your tape or glue on this bottom flap, what would end up happening is that it would now be sticking to the envelope up there. So you want to add that there, but you want to fold this first just to make sure that you're getting it where you want it. And so then you're going to take your glue and you're just going to make a nice line right down this to give that a nice seal so nothing can escape. Oops, and I missed a little spot there. Okay, so then you're going to go ahead and fold that up since you already made your crease line. And then just take your bone folder and make sure that that adheres really nicely. And now what I like to do is I like to actually fold that in there right at the where it meets the other two sides. And then I'm going to fold it. And it, there's nothing wrong with leaving it the other way. You can there, That's perfectly fine. So then what I do is then I take it out and I unfold it and I just add a little bit at this tip here just like that and a little bit down each side so that nothing can get caught on it coming in or out. And then I just hold it back under and give it a little rub. And so there's that. Nice and easy. The card fits in there nicely. And then you want to put your top down. And give that a nice crease. So now whatever you decide you want to do from here is up to you. You can embellish this any way you want. You could add plain papers here for your address and your return address. And so there we are. Oh, we have our card perfectly in there. So now, why don't we move on and make a lined envelope? It's super easy and I'll, walk, I'll be able to walk you through how to make an envelope all over again. Okay, so this one I thought we would do a little 4x5 card, make it a little bit smaller. And so this is the card that I created, and this was with that ooh la la pad. And I absolutely love making, doing mats. And on the back, I didn't do any embellishment like I did on this one. So let's move this guy out of the way. And for this one, I chose, this is the envelope, and then this will be the liner. So essentially, it'll line up just like this. And so, 
for your liner paper, you're going to end up cutting that a quarter inch smaller than your envelope. So let's move our card and our liner for now, because we got to start out by making the envelope. And so over here, like I said, my card ended up being, I went with four by five. And so I needed to cut my paper down to seven and five eighths. And the punch guide I'm going to use is three and a half. So let's bring this back over. I don't think we'll need that. Let's see. When it lines up to three and a half right there. No, I don't think we'll end up needing it. So, but we might as well just in case so I don't have to try to lift it up while it's in there. All right. So again, let's get our our little tool. Oh, and before we start, let me show you. So up here, that's what our notches look like inside. Your, that's your. This is the box scoring groove. If this is just the envelope one, you're only going to have it over here. This wouldn't be there. This will come in handy when we do the box. So then over here, this is what it looks like over here. So there's your notches. And this one, as you can see, it lines up against this wall. And this one lines up against this wall. So all right, three and a half. And this is where you kind of got to decide how you want your envelope. And I want more of the dark. I think I want the dark to be the top. So I'm going to start like that. So a three and a half. And this part for me took some getting used to is to making sure I punch first. So you're going to punch. You're going to line that up to that first groove. And you're just going to follow. I didn't push very hard at all, so I did it a second time, and there we go. And now remember, this this doesn't matter except for the first time. This punch guide is only essential for the first measurement. Now we're just going to line this notch up with our score. And this is where I can get a little bit of OCD perfectionist. You're gonna punch and score. And I sometimes just like to run it twice, just to be sure. Punch and score. Sometimes I'll turn the paper upside down, just to be sure that I, I'm not tearing at the paper. Okay, so line, punch, score. And you know, sometimes if you have trouble, like when you're first learning this, I actually started from the bottom and worked my way up, so that I could know where this was going to meet up. All right, let's get our last one done. We're going to line it up. We're going to punch and score. Line, punch, and score. And so that's what our finished product looks like. And so I'm going to go ahead and do the creases, but because we're adding a liner to it, I don't want to assemble it just yet. I did that with my first one, and it made it a little bit difficult. Oh yeah, and then our corner rounder. Well, now this is my top, so I'm going to only round this corner. I don't, I'm going to be tucking this one in, so I always forget about that too until I'm starting to assemble. So you just stick it in on this side and punch. Yeah, there you have a nice round corner. So now we're going to get this all ready, fold that over. And I'll show you with this bone folder this time. It works just fine. The only reason I don't really care for this is you can see it's got a little bit of a bubble there. And a little notch there. So sometimes if I forget and I go upside down, this can catch on the paper. So as long as you're careful. So we're going to score. Or not score. We're going to fold and use the bone folder to make that nice and crisp. And then I'll just get all the folds all done, and then we'll make our liner. Because it's just, it's almost the exact same process, just a teeny tiny bit different. There's just a few different steps. And so then I'll fold this one down. We'll just make sure all our folds are there, though it's not really necessary since we are putting that liner on there. So I'm just going to open this up, and we're going to set this off to the side while we make our liner. And so... With this now, you're going to 
use the exact same lines because you want this to match up with that card. So you're going to use the exact same lines, and I'm just going to make sure by opening up the instruction book and verifying that I am correct, because I'd hate to be wrong and have to start over. So... So there's the so what the instructions look like for the envelope liner. So we'll just keep that handy. And if I didn't say it, you're gonna, this is going to be a quarter inch smaller than your envelope paper. So my envelope paper, again, was 7 and 5 eighths. So I cut this one at 7 and 3 eighths. So we're going to do the same process, but we're not going to score all the way. And you'll see what I'm talking about. So we're going to line that up to the three and a half for the first mark. And we're still going to punch. Oops. Oh, I'm bumping you. I'm so sorry. And so now you're not going to start up here. You're going to come down here and you're just going to do about an inch. You don't want to go too far. This is just literally to help you cut. So that's all I did. It's going to help you to cut and it's going to help you to line up. So then we're going to come over here, and there's just enough peeking out that I can still use my guide. So, punch. And this paper is thinner, so I'm being very careful, and you want to just score lightly. You don't need to score very deeply at all with this. Okay. And I maybe went a little too far on that, but that's quite alright. Okay, so I have it lined up. Punch. And come down to the bottom here and just score about an inch. And one more time. See, it's so repetitive, it gets very easy. Oh, see, and it did start to rip right there. So, now, what this is going to tell us to do is cut off the two side flaps. And we want these two cut off because these two... And you can check it over here, just to be sure, before you round it, to make sure that that's all going to line up, so that you know you have the right side. And you can see this one is entirely too big, and it doesn't look right. So, this is our top here, and so I'm going to just, I'm going to decide if I like this color more, or this color, and I like it better here. So I'm going to round that off. I mean, ultimately, you're going to get two envelope liners out of this, so I might as well just cut both off. Huh? So now we need to move our fun little punch board out of the way and grab our paper cutter. And we're going to move this back out of the way too. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do... Now I know which sides I want to keep because I rounded them. So we're going to cut these off using the score line as a guide since you can't really line it up. And that's where you're going to use that wire inside. And of course it's white paper so it's really not all that easy for me to see where. I just want to make sure. Because there's also a groove there that you can use and that's what I'm going to be using. Then I'm going to hold my paper steady. And then I just kind of want to make sure that you can see where the shoulder on that one lines up and then this one's sticking up a little bit more. So I'm just ever so gently going to pull that down so that they're even. I'm going to hold my paper nice and tight and cut them off. You can save that or toss it. It just depends what you want to do with it. And then you're just going to repeat on this side. It's so hard to see with this color. Alright, so my score line is lined up with the groove. I can hold it because I have a tendency to whip that down and then... <laughs> and it looks like it's pretty well lined up this time. And again, just don't really need that. So now we actually need to cut this in half. And what I'm going to do, you can measure if you want. I'm just going to lightly pinch in the middle here and kind of follow that all over. So it's as even as I can possibly get it. I mean, it doesn't have to be a super straight line because most of that's going to be hidden. And so you're going to use that now as your guide to cut. So you're going to cut this right in half. And now if you make another envelope of this size, you're going to have an extra paper. And then I'm just going to use this 
dark bold line here as a guide to make sure I have it as straight as possible. And I'm going to hold that down so it don't slide on me. And there we go. We have two liners, so now I can decide which one I like better. And I like this one a little bit better because it goes with my colors a little bit more. Well, I guess this one kind of does. We'll go with this one. So I'm just going to stick this off to the side. And I'll probably just write very lightly in pencil on this side so I know what it is. All right, so now we can assemble our envelope. And it's just that easy. So... I wanted the darker side to be on top, so I'm going to just kind of make sure that that lines up so I know about how much I want hanging over. So, all right, let's grab our double side tape here, and I'm just going to follow the edges as close to the edge as I can. And then right down the side... This paper is whole. It is. You don't have to worry about that. When you go to flatten it and fold it, it will disappear and blend into the rest of the. If I had more of this left over, I would make a cross there too. I just, so now you just want to ever so carefully line up your top to make that as even as possible. And take your bone folder and marry them together. <laughs> and so now. You're going to refold this and make that really crisp. So there we go. It's nice. And I'm going to straighten that out because it kind of moved on me. I hadn't used thin paper like this before, so. So now we can go ahead and assemble our envelope as usual. Just putting a little strip down this way. A little strip down this way. Tighten that up. And again, I'm going to tuck that in because that's, you know, like I said, you can keep it just like that. There's, that's perfectly fine. I just prefer the look of it tucked in like that. And then bone folder. And where's our cute little card? So this might be something I give to a friend, either just for fun or to cheer them up. So there we go. There is our cute little card, and I'm just going to actually make those a little bit stronger. And there it is. All right, let's make our box. So I want to, I can't wait to show you the colors that I picked out for my box and my bow. So I really liked this gold lined. I thought it was perfect for making a gift box. Nice and shiny. And I'm actually kind of curious if it's going to crack. And then I used, I wanted to try thin paper to make the bow because the last one was really stiff. And so I thought this gold paper here was a nice complement to it. I love mixing patterns. And so everything for the bow is pre-cut and I'll walk you through that. Okay, so for the box, you're going to decide which size you like. And just as a reminder... This is the one that I made, and this was using a full piece of paper. So the one that I decided to do for this demonstration is a little bit smaller. That was an extra large. So if we come over here and look, the extra large 12, so I, that was a 4x4x4, four by four by four, and it's an extra large box. The one that I decided to do for this demonstration is a 2.5x2.5x4. So it's right, right there. So the paper size is 10, it's a medium box. So the start line, and this is our start line on this side, and then our diagonal line is over here. So these are our three score lines. We're gonna use this one, this one, and this one, depending on what it tells you. So when it tells you over here, your start line, two and a half by two and a half by four, is medium. So we're going to line our paper up to the medium. And then our diagonal line is extra large, so that'll be our other score mark. So we also want to extend our bar out. And so the one thing that's a little different about this is that we're going to work both sides of this. So we're going to 
and I want to just flip the booklet open for you to see. And here's our instructions for the box. So this will walk you through. These first four steps are everything that I just told you. And when we're rotating, we're going to repeat steps three through six, which again are listed every time right up here. So three through six is aligning it to the medium. So unlike the envelope, we don't always line up over here. Say our starting mark was three inches. We're not always going to start at three inches, but with the box, we're always going to start with medium. And that's that first letter over here. So it's a medium box. So, and this might be a little bit harder to score because it is a little bit different. So always you're going to start out with punching and scoring. So now for this one, I'll go backwards just so you can see on this first one. It's down here, and so you're going to follow that line up, and it meets up here. So it actually does go inside. <laughs> I don't know why it wasn't <laughs> doing that for me, but so it goes inside that one. And so then you're going to come over here, and again, you have A and B, and I'm not really sure what that line is for. But we're just going to use our regular, it's probably for the string tie box, so we're just going to follow that all the way down. Oops. And I'm just going to go again because sometimes I miss getting up in there. And so now we need this one. And they said for our diagonal line on a 2.5 by 2.5 by 4 that we want the extra large. So we're going to come over here and score. Now one good thing to remember is you're going to score down to your first line there. So very lightly coming down and meeting there. If you go too hard or too fast, that's where you can rip a hole right through it right there because you've already scored. So now what you're going to do, we've punched, so now we're going to rotate our paper, line it up to medium, punch, and start doing our score lines. Just going in there, Score line A, score line B, and obviously you can, once you know what you're doing, you can go a lot faster, and then score line C, and then that's going to meet right up at your line. So again, we're going to flip, we're going to line it up at medium, we're going to punch, score line A, in that first hole, score line B. And yes, this is going to have a ton of lines on it. And then score line C. And that will meet right there. And we're going to flip again to the medium. And this is our last time on this side. Punch. Score. A, score B. Score C. So right now it looks like that and at least this is good for showing off those lines. So now what you're going to do is you're literally going to flip your paper over. You don't do any more scoring, but you're going to line that up because you need the notches. So you're going to do the same thing on all four sides. So there. So now you have a sheet of paper that looks like that. And what it wants you to do next is we're done with this so we can move this. Oops. And throw my paper on the floor. So we'll move this out of the way. And there's all our little scraps that come out. I kind of wish it had some kind of cup to gather everything. So now what it wants us to do is it wants us to really define these score lines. And I'll show you which ones. It wants us to really define these two that create the X. So it would be right here, right here, right here, and right here. And I'll show you how we do that. And then we're going to go in and do the same thing to our flaps. So all you're really going to do is you're going to take it and you're going to fold it. And this is where I prefer my other bone folder. And I actually, like, sorry, I'd like to take the rounded side and just run it because I don't want to rub that gold off. 
there we go so that side and then I'll fold in from the top get that one and this will make all the difference in the world when you're actually going to fold this all up together so I'm actually gonna make sure because I realize I didn't really push down as hard as I could on this side all right so we got these two now we're gonna turn it over and do the other two that run in the same way. I'm gonna push down nice and hard because this paper is super thick. And I'm gonna do it twice. It's so like I said, it's thick. And for some reason that gold seems, and I'm sorry if I'm blinding you with it. So we're gonna do the same thing on this side. And then after that, we're gonna fold our flaps down and go in on that. And there we go. And it is kind of marking up that gold. So maybe I'm not the biggest fan of that. So all of those have been nice and creased. So now we want to come in and do these. And I'm, just for the sake, if you don't have the other one, I want to show you with this one. So what I do is I try to take it right around in that on that spot and crease it there. And it doesn't seem to be scratching up the uh, gold as much as the other one did so all right so all of these have been folded now <laughs> the one step that I did forget is the one part that I haven't got to show you guys and that's on this side where it shows the corner slitter we want to do that to all four of our corners like I said it would have been easier to do that right away before I made all these folds better. You stick it in and you do it and then it makes that, that's how you're gonna attach your corners. So, let's get that all taken care of. And you wanna make sure you do all four corners. And from here, it's pretty self-explanatory. So, and then there's the little paper rings. We're gonna move this off to the side. We don't really need this. Actually, I'm gonna take it off camera. So this part, these essentially get folded in. And this is not in the instructions, but I wanna kinda define those just to make it a little bit easier. So without actually, so I'm gonna pinch that and I'm gonna try to run my fingers in there and just really tighten that up because that was one issue I had the first time around with it not wanting to stay. So I'm just going to try to pinch it as best I can and try to run my fingernails up and define that crease on all four corners just to give it that nice crisp tight crease. All right, so you can already see it wanting to come together. So it, it will fold in like this on itself like that. So it always tells you to start out with the first two and attach them. This is where I ended up taping it. And so then I found it easier to take one side and push that in first and then hold that in place same thing over here it's already kind of doing it that side's coming in and now that side is this was the hardest part i had was trying to get this hooked and maybe it was the bigger box but there we go oh, oh don't rip don't rip you can feel the stressing see now and then ones always come undone i this i just i'm not the biggest fan of this i like i said i ended up taping it yesterday just to get it to stay in place so if there's something I could be doing to make this part easier on myself for those of you who may have done it which I'm guessing not too many have if you're here for a tutorial see it's ripping I just haven't gotten the groove of it down I, I don't think envelopes is easy making envelope liners is easy even the bows are easy it just doesn't want to see it just looks sloppy now good thing I'm covering that with a bow <laughs> 
See, and with Christmas coming, I thought this would be perfect because there's always those really small boxes for smaller things that I either can never find in the store or they're really expensive. Okay, so that looks really terrible, but that's the idea of it. So there, I'm going to put a little piece of tape down on that just, just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere and so that my bow will sit nice and flush. So I'm going to try to straighten that out as best I can. And I'm just going to stick a piece of tape right on there, which you would, might want to do anyway if you're giving this away. And so there's our gift box. I think it looks cute with this gold. So let's make it a bow, shall we? And I decided to make a medium bow, and this actually goes really fast. I think this is the fa even faster than envelopes. So, Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to have time to make the string tie box. It's... A little tiny bit more complicated so if you would like I can do a completely separate review for that but we will do the file folder because that's as easy as folding it in half and making a couple cuts so so for this now you're gonna I already made all the cuts like I said so for the bow you're gonna select your bow size I went with medium and so your paper width that's how wide your paper is. So going like that, one and a quarter, and then you're going to cut three, three lengths. You're going to cut three lengths of paper. So A is seven, B is four, and C is a quarter of an inch. Punch guide three and a half and punch guide two. So the medium one is going to turn out to be exactly this size. So that would fit right really nicely on top of there. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your strip. And again, step-by-step -step instructions right there. It does make it very easily. So you're going to you're select. We did all the cutting, and that would be all the way. That's steps one, two, and three. So now we're going to align paper A, left edge, which you can decide what your left edge is, to the punch guide measurement. And like I said, for A, it's three and a half. So we're going to line our paper up to three and a half, which also ends up being the halfway point since this first strip is seven. So you're going to punch that right in the middle. And what you're going to do is you're going to flip it over and do the same exact thing at three and a half. So, this is where it starts to get a little fun. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take this and you're going to you get your bow guide right in the middle. You're going to line that up with that. And what that's going to do, I'll show you, it's going to chomp off the corner. Oh, kind of ate it. Let's try that again, huh? I think I pulled it out too fast. Uh oh. Mm. Let me grab my scissors. I hope. I wonder if it's because the paper is just too thin. So maybe you won't be able to use like the recollections paper. Maybe you can only use thick. We'll we'll see. I'm hoping this is a fluke. So I'm just gonna cut that. Um. And then I'm just gonna turn it to the other side and rinse and repeat. Maybe I should make sure that there's nothing obstructing it. Okay. Move it out of the way. So line it up with that bow guide and punch. There we go. That one was nice and clean. So now we're going to turn it upside down. And this is a little bit more tricky because you you got to trust yourself. Line it up with that bow guide and slide it in ever so gently all the way till it's flush with the back. Punch. And so again, yeah, maybe bows and thin paper. I just thought it was kind of hard to hold. Okay. So, well, we just need one more cut. So I'm just going to line my paper up with that and slide it all the way back as straight as possible and punch. Let's see, what the heck? And slide it all the way back. Yeah, I don't think it wants to. I don't think it cares. I'll try that one more time. So 
something with this paper. It's just not liking. I wonder if this has got a weird coating on it. Well, we're just going to get through it. We only have like four more cuts to make. Yeah, there we go. So we'll just set this up there. And so with this now, it's the same thing. Our second punch guide is two because this is four, so it's basically half. I'm going to line that up, punch, so we get a nice cut out in the middle, flip it upside down, line it up with two, punch, we got that. Now this part, your, your bow guide is going to become the center of your paper, and this is again where you're going to have to trust. You can also use this notch and this notch to kind of be your guides. So when you get that all the way flush at the back, so that you can kind of tell if that's going in right. There's actually a couple of notches that are on the board to, like just outside this notch, there's a little tiny cutout. That's kind of what I use, and see I'm off center, so I'm just going to go with it because I'm kind of standing, I'm looking at this through the monitor, so there's a little bit better, but... <sighs> I had a better time with the bow the last time, so... <laughs> Good thing that this wasn't actually for anybody, otherwise I would just recut it. So now we're going to assemble. Ooh! And I'm going to shake you. Alright. So all you do on this is you're going to bring this to the middle on both sides. And I am out of the double sided sticky tape, so I actually have some school glue. <laughs> I might have to hold it a little longer, but I'm okay with that. So you want to try to center that as best as you can. Just that side there, so otherwise you're going to lose your bow shape. All right, so there we have, it should look like that now. Now you're gonna, I cut two, oh, see I didn't hold it down long enough. This bow is a disaster. Why don't I just hold it while I uh, explain to you this part. So this one I had uh, cut two because I wasn't sure what the lines on it would end up looking like. And I wanted to be able to pick, but they pretty much ended up the same. This one is a little more center, so I'm actually gonna use this one. And so this is going to wrap around, and so you're going to do that, and you can put it on any way you want. I like this full piece to cover my line. I don't know, I, th I feel like it gives it a little bit more security. And so on the underside, now this sticky double-sided sticky tape would be so much better suited for this. Okay, so got a little bit of glue. You're going to take your piece of paper as center as possible and literally just fold it over that little groove. You're going to hold it down a little bit and of course you can come over and make adjustments if you need to. But this isn't, this is just for demonstration so I'm not going to do anything with it. And so now this is your bottom right here. We didn't end up needing that. This is your bottom. So you're going to put a little bit of glue right there, right or tape. You would just put a little strip there, and then you just line up your center that you cut out, press it together, and there is your cute little paper bow. I love these bows because I, I'm terrible at making bows. So this one I made for this, so they go together like that, and I would just try to keep moving it until it covers up that sloppiness in the middle. <laughs> so that's what it would look like on the side. Super duper cute. Alright, so why don't we make, and I, re I really do apologize that we weren't able to make the money envelope or the the string. This is um, what we're going we're gonna to make the folder really quick and I just glued two pieces of paper together so it would be double sided.
So for the sake of time, friends, I just went ahead and made this. It's super easy, but make sure you use double-sided paper because I doubled up mine and you can see it's fraying already. I used a thick and then this is a thinner piece. I still love it. I think it'll be really cute if I would have made it a little bigger. I just wanted to try it out. I thought this would be a good, cute size because it's really any size you want it to be. And so all you do is you line this up with the bow guide you give it a punch, you move over to the 3 inch, and you could probably start there so that your notch isn't getting in the way. Yeah, do that, and then you take your paper cutter and just slice straight across to that groove, cut that off. You're going to cut, well, this would, you're, you're going to cut the quarter, the first, you're going to cut 3 quarters of an inch off, and then you're going to stick this side in under the bow guide, give it a punch, line it up to the three inch side or you can do three inches first and then cut that but you know that's up to you and then you punch again you take your paper trimmer cut over then you're gonna flip it over and repeat those steps so like I said you could go ahead and line it up to the three inch mark and punch and then move it over line it up to the bowl guide and punch again and you slice that off where that a groove is now formed and there's your little file folder and I have these little things from a different uh, little scrapbooking kit that I had so I was just gonna you know with this size teeny tiny file folder uh, none of them are really gonna fill the space as much as I thought it would so I think I'm going to actually just go ahead and stick this one on there because I think that one's adorable. So I'm just going to take my glue or your double-sided double sticky tape and you're just going to smear that all over and just kind of line it up in the center wherever you want it. And there we go. There's my little file folder that I made all by myself and I'm actually going to take the tape and reinforce the bottom of this just to make it look a little prettier. Well, all right, guys, thank you so much for joining me for my first tutorial. We made a lot of really fun stuff. I hope I taught you a little bit of how to use the one, two, three punch board, or at the very least your envelope punch board and your box punch board. And you can make the ribbons if you have the envelope punch board. It, you might not have the guides you need. They might even have a, a bow punch board on its own. I didn't see one. So, again, I'm really sorry we didn't get to make the other two little projects. But if you, that's something you'd like to see, let me know down in the comments. But we did get a lot of really cute stuff made. We got our box with the shoddy top, a very cute bow to cover that shoddy top, a very adorable tiny file folder. You know, I'm actually, I think it was probably in the instructions, but looking at it right now, I'm going to chomp that corner just to give it a more finished look. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Yeah, I like that a lot better. Maybe not that one. That one could have stayed straight, but it's mine and I love it. And we also made our other two envelopes. This guy here with no lining, but a very cute card that matches. And then we made an envelope with a liner. And I think this turned out super cute. And the card inside too. I know one of my girlfriends is going to just love getting this. So if you guys want to see how to make the string box or the money envelope, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I will let you guys go. Thank you for sticking with me. This was a long tutorial, but it was still a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. I hope you'll join me for the next one. And with that, I will let you go. Have an awesome day, friends. Have fun diamond painting, crafting, making anything. Just have fun. I love you, friends, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.